tell you a little bit about what you're about to see because I don't have an intro clip for this vlog. I am about to show you what happened roughly six months ago in preparation for something that is about to happen less than a week from now. And what I'm talking about is the Read or Dare Extraordinaire. Yes, it's finally here. The Read or Dare vlog is here. And that is what you're about to watch. We did Read or Dare Extraordinaire in the very early days of June. And it was a wonderful readathon to celebrate the milestones that some friends and I had reached around the same time. I hit 1K, Noelle hit 1K, and the roomies, Christine and Mo, hit 3K on their YouTube channel. So it was really exciting for us to celebrate these milestones together in a really fun, unique, new way by hosting a 24-hour readathon in which each of us went live for eight hours straight over the course of three days for a total of 24 hours. We invited a bunch of other guests to come and join us on these sprints and we also sent each other each a book. And the most fun part of Reader Dare is not really the reading but it's the daring. And so we devised these challenges which we put onto this challenge wheel. So we had each of the hosts do a spin once per day and we also had each of the guests do a spin and occasionally the spinner would land on everyone plays and so everybody on screen would have to participate as well. This was a very interactive readathon, um, a very interactive general live show in which we would ask the chat for a lot of suggestions on what we should do. Um, one of the first dares in here is one of the wildest things I've ever done and it's because of you in the chat making me eat that, okay? On top of that we also challenged you to do things in which you would reach out to creators or authors that you really really liked and told them how much they mean to you. So we had so much fun doing this. Um, once again we are just very very grateful and thankful to all of our subscribers for getting us to this goal and for continuing to stick around because round two is just around the corner for Read or Scare, our Halloween themed Read or Dare readathon. So without further ado, I will lead you into the vlog in which we first unbox the books that we were each sent by all the other hosts and unveil them for the first time in front of the camera. No idea what we got until we actually opened it on screen for everybody. And from there, that was our TBR that we read over the course of the rest of the readathon. And from there, I'm going to show you the rest of this highlight reel for this really wonderful weekend that we had. I had so much fun and I already can't wait to do it again. And without further ado, here's the vlog. <laughs> oh my god, that book made me sob. Just the reaction. What is that? I was like, like an old lady on my like, on vacation. Uh, guys, I was gonna get her Malibu Rising, but then we got it in Book of the Month, and I was like, well, return. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god, you got me misborn. <laughs> Oh, it's like, like, oh, very large like, like, expanse of the sea. Okay, I'm actually really excited. Oh. The Swallows. Yeah, that was my favorite book of this year so far. Oh my god, fun! Really? I wanted to read this. To be taught if fortunate. That was my favorite Ooh. book of last year. Oh, a science, science fiction novella. Share the cover. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to. So good. I Ooh. actually kind of cried reading that. Please, lady. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Okay. Hello? Hey. Like, excuse the fudge out of me. Yeah. Oh. You think you have yes. a yes. yes! Oh my god, I want to read that so bad. I opened it backwards. Angel Fall. What is this exotic novel? Oh my god, I bought that because of Noelle. It's like, it's like angels and demons. It's like vintage booktube. Like, this is like 2013 booktube when it was all the rage. Freaking um, perfect. This is right up Christina. I was about to say, what is it? <gasps> oh my god! I've been wanting to read this book. I'm glad that you get it. It's just a deception. Wait, I know that book. This book is about to be she, so good. She's on her wedding day. I'm hooked. Oh, a tell zone. Oh, it's a tell zone. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. Oh, my god. Oh, my god. <laughs> You're like, wow. Five stars. Okay, but Christine and I have very similar tastes. Oh, God, don't say that. <laughs> oh, my God, it's American Gods. Okay, wait. I've heard this is really, really good from a trusted source. Other than Christine, also. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, I figured I could open Noelle's little card for me, which is very sweet. So I'm going to open it now and see what she has to say. I got to the channel. I was like, you got a master. I don't know. I can't believe you're the first one. Oh my god. No, I knew it. Yes. So you need to tell me different ingredients. I'm going to go find them in my house. I'm going to make that sandwich. I'm going to eat it. Chocolate. Chocolate. Okay. Guys, why have so many people come to this? There's so many. <laughs> I hate this one, Brent, but I'm the toppy. <laughs> I knew I was gonna get this dare. So I wrote down all the suggestions that people made that were things that I have and am not allergic to and are not Tide Pods. And now I'm going to make this sandwich. I made up this dare and I knew it was gonna bite me in the ass and here we are.
mustard, mayo, sour cream, red peppers, Nutella, sriracha, jelly, peanut butter, and ketchup. Ready to rumble. Yeah, all this beef and blog. Yes, perfect. Ready? Ready? Gross. It's less gross than I thought it would be. Let me let me walk you through it. Um, it is Nutella, marshmallows, and cinnamon. And on this side, I have strawberry jelly, some more cinnamon, thyme, mustard, pepper, ketchup, and sriracha. I am so excited. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> one bite. One bite. One bite. Like swallow. Can we get a third? She said, not bad. <laughs> this is really good. <laughs> you are lying. <laughs> you are no. lying. Stop! He's eating it, everyone! No. <laughs> no. What, does it look daily snack now? <laughs> wait, wait. Uh, <laughs> you're not. You're not. Uh, the take of uh, the year. <laughs> catalog but it's a story um and when you open it up it, you know there's a regular description but look at this on the bottom that's so cute that it has like everything as if you were going to buy these items and then look at this where it has the map i have never so been like tickled by a map inside of a book before because this is so ikea-ish you know like it's so obviously ikea and like look at this i love this so much <laughs> think about you lately all i seem to do this boy oh, has got me crazy <laughs> yeah you got me stressing a little oh, obsessive oh, i can see it too you got me stressing with my pierce brown i just defended you on a live stream I invite him to come to us. I'm gonna do it. Even better. You're gonna write a really enthusiastic comment as if you are your own biggest fan. <laughs> and everyone is gonna go like your comment. And you're gonna show yourself some love. Ah, uh, Stan, go off this. Look at you doing the most, trying to be sneaky sneak on a live show, taking selfies and shit. I rose on fully. Glad you had ten dollars to spare to tame those swirls on your face. Your wine glass is <laughs> survived. Good job for washing your hair today for the selfie. Okay, bye, queen. Love you so much. Yeah, like, I mean, you're doing like no man girls are good girls who are taste for a hot shot even if we were it, no one would know because it's not much shot oh I have to the crash every day for what reason well duh that was really good yeah, that was actually that was so tired but i'm doing great and also i really like horror store i will say um i managed to read all over 100 pages during the sprints and i really really like it um it has a lot of the classic grady hendrix stuff in it that i've come to expect from his books they're very insidiously creepy without being outright scary so far and we have i would say like a pretty likable but flawed main character oh when I think of the word disappointment, Six of Crows comes to mind. Oh. And this review is full of opinions by me. 
Please, don't read this review if you get easily offended. Old, crusty, musty Kaz. <laughs> what? Sell Kaz's soul for $10. Nez <laughs> is an average main character. What? Sad, she oh was my the god. Worst. The only law that applied to her was gravity. And someday she just has that. <laughs> gravity doesn't... <laughs> you are telling me a group of broke teenagers playing in a house? And then manage to pull it off. Those are my opinions on this book. Please don't attack me. Oh, we just ended our live. Guess what time it is? 5.06 a.m. Okay. Our last challenge was to draw your favorite book cover from memory. So I drew Sleeping Giants. Pretty basic. And I can kind of see the sun coming up because it's getting light out again. It's day two of Reader Dare. I got like one of those everyone plays dares, which means everybody had to do this. And I had to write a fan letter to an author that I love. So I wrote to Sylvain Nouvelle, who wrote Sleeping Giants, which is my favorite book. And I just checked during these sprints and he liked the post. Of course he did, because he's actually very active on Twitter. So great. <laughs> Um, but it's a very genuine letter, so it's fine. Okay. Aww. So it's similar, but but not exactly the same thing as a selfie. So this one, you're going to write a fan letter to your favorite author. Um, how do we decide that we're going to do this? Do we want to do it through Twitter? Do we want to do it through Instagram? Guys, if I, if I, if I do a letter to Pierce Brown, I'm kidding. Just, just another letter. Wait. That's not true. That's you're not a liar, Brooke. Don't play with me. I'm not even going to look. Look for me. That's not true. How did we miss that notification? I'm nervous. I'm sweating. Brooke, oh. don't play with me. He did! <laughs> So mine is going to Shanna Chakraborty, which is the author of the David Brad trilogy. I think you're the coolest and hope that one day I'll be a peer of yours and not just a fan. So thank you so much for your stories and long live my favorite guy, Dar Yahoo. I decided to write Katie Tucker and I didn't write nearly as much sentiment. But <laughs> that makes I sense. I said hi. Um, just wanted to reach out and say Jonah and Callie are my favorite fictional couple and that wow their heart was so good. Oh gee. Thank you so much for the <laughs> Dear Mella Miller, hi bestie. <laughs> I, read all your, I read all your works and just wanted to let you know they've always left me incredibly emotionless and incoherent and unimaginably not okay. I love your books with my whole entire heart. P.S. Hades and Persephone retelling when. Who wrote The Poppy War? And I wrote, Hello, Gal Pal, Saver of This World, Bringer of Light, Destroyer of My Dreams, Miss Rebecca Kwong. I am a part of a readathon called Reader Dare, and one of the dares we got is to write a letter to our favorite author. So naturally, here I am evading your DMs with this embarrassing letter. I just wanted to take this opportunity to tell you that you're the greatest writer to ever live. Your mind is threateningly powerful, and I'd let it stomp over me any day. And I wrote my letter to Jordan Aplenko, who wrote Ray Bear which Ooh. is the literal best book that I've ever read in my life. Um, and so I said, Jordan, like we're on a first name basis. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to let you know, I have literally not stopped thinking about Ray Bear since I checked it out of the library a few months ago. The second I finished reading it, I ordered myself a copy, the Illumicrate Archive Special Edition, and I'm counting down the days until Redemptor's release. Thank you for sharing Tarsai's story with the world. She's the heroine I've needed for as long as I can remember. I will keep this sunshine girl in my heart forever. And we just did another challenge because we have our guests do their challenges in between sprints. So Casey did one and it landed on Everyone Plays again. We all had to super fan ourselves, which means you go on your latest YouTube video or your latest Instagram post and then you write to yourself as if you are your own biggest fan. But I'm having so much fun. It's so great. And I love all the guests that are on tonight. And last night was such a blast. I thought I was going to be exhausted today, but I've actually been totally fine. I slept for about five-ish hours and then I had two coffees. I don't know. Maybe I still have my youth. It's incredible. I still remember the feeling I wanna 
dance till I can't no more. All of this time I've been dreaming. Yeah, and we do To Kill a Mockingbird is our novel. Yeah. And uh, Shirley Jackson, The Lottery is always a big hit. And hey, oh, your bangs, your fringe. Oh, 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 <laughs> okay, my two star. This was I was not a nice person this day. This was December sixteenth, twenty twenty. What more can I really say about this book? The story was an interesting idea, but the execution was guessable, and I found myself either falling asleep or becoming incredibly incredibly bored page to page. I almost DNF'd but was reading because it was a gift for Christmas. All in all, it was a little too sappy and perfect for me. The plot points were a little too convenient, and it was easy to see the end game from the first couple of pages. I didn't care much about the characters or relate to them. I will say that the setting of this book is very good, and I thought that was one of the best parts. In the end, though, I would not recommend. <laughs> Great. So that's your, that's your two-star review. Yeah. What was I doing? Okay. And um, this is my five-star review. <clears throat> Update. <laughs> After further review and contemplation, I decided to give this book five whole stars instead of two. Here's that. The complete lack of chemistry between the main character and each and every single one of her 12 dates is exactly the romance trope that I needed to bring me joy this Christmas. We don't often see the world of contemporary romances, so it was nice that this book took so long in that setting to make sure we could really see that world and imagine ourselves in it. <laughs> this book really got me into the Christmas spirit because the plot points were so easy and convenient to guess. Who likes surprises on Christmas? I know I don't. <laughs> the main character also made questionable decisions the entire book, which, after further review, I find could be the equivalent of an annoying cousin twice removed and thus a very charming choice for a main character. Cousin twice removed. All in all, what an interesting read. If you like romances that feature repetitive plot points, trudging through setting descriptions, and two main characters that just aren't sure if they should be together, then look no further. This is the book for you. Amazing. I love it. Wow. You convinced me. Sorry, um, get blocked by... <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> I'm gonna say it. So amazing. Uh, don't be. Okay, Shai, are you an artist? Uh, we're about to find out. Okay, alright. I'm gonna look at it. Uh, 
many glistening ways to choose a chlamydia to read. First, you could ask for recommendations from your friends and naughty things. Just don't ask Aunt Darian. She only reads <laughs> sultry books with suspenders ripping goddesses on the cover. Head to your local library or Quebec and press the shelves until something catches your <laughs> these nuts. Um, okay, I'm gonna have to go with Australia. Let's talk about, um...
me in the uterus. Let's lean in, folks. Oh, wait, it's, just, it's the vibe of that. Okay. Hello, my name is Astronaut Mo. I'm on my way to planet Badonkadonk. I'll be gone for 656 days. I am very sloppy about the trip, but I will miss my dump truck ass. <laughs> Luckily, my second cousin tries to move to pack me a jacket to keep me super duper. When I land <laughs> on the planet, I will run for joy. I am burdened to walk on another planet. I could not be more purely male. <laughs> I have actual tears. Like you can see it in the vlog. I look like I'm sobbing. Like I'm so upset. But I'm crying. I'm laughing so hard. I've gotten the hopes of myself a little bit. Um. <laughs> That was so funny, that was so much fun, uh, and it's exactly encapsulating the whole feeling of reader dare why I was so excited to do this, because as much fun as I have planning all sorts of readathons and everything, this is like the goofiest one by far, and it is purely just about having fun with your friends. It really has nothing to do with like, you have to read this, you have to do that, you have to fulfill these prompts, but it's literally just doing super goofy stuff with people and just bringing back the joy of like you know, late night sleepovers with your best buds and having fun. And I love that that is also really possible right now. Um, not just because of lockdown, but also because of distance and how far away everybody is and also having everybody in the chat participate. We were so happy to have so many people with us to read with us, to do challenges with us, to see us do all sorts of crazy things and to give us suggestions for like the Mad Lib and everything else. And oh my God, it's so much fun. Um, I already can't wait for tomorrow. I feel like my sprints went by like super fast. Um, I have about an hour left of mine. It does not feel like we've been live for seven hours. And this is the funniest live show I've ever been on between yesterday and today. And I just, I love my friends so much. Sorry, I just keep remembering dump drug ass. I can't focus on my book. I'm professional. I'm professional. Stop. <clears throat> Back to the book. Wig, hour, wig, hour, wig, hour. Everyone plays. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, we've had so many group ones today. Yes, those are so fun. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's oh my god. Good one. This well, escalates so much. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are we doing this? Are we doing this? This is the eighth version of Fuck Mary Kill. It's hold hands, kiss, murder. <laughs> Love it. Thank you. Grabbed a bubble tea before we jump into our last day of Reader Dare Extraordinaire. So excited. Last night was such a blast. Uh, the entire time was honestly beautiful. It was so much fun. It was hilarious. And it was probably like between yesterday and the night before that, the best time I've had on book two, period. I've had so much fun, you know, over, over a year, but it was next level. It was so great. So I can't wait for today. Um, it's a little bit more during the day because I'm like running home and we're going to go do it like right away. But that's the story. Really excited. Here we go. Day three, the finale. Let's go. Let's go. Before I jump onto the stream, I just want to say I actually finished a very large expanse of the sea and it was really good. I think I'm somewhere around like a 4.5 star. Um, as much as I really, really enjoyed it, I definitely think that I was looking for a slightly different wrap up um, without saying what happens. I don't know. I mean, I... I wouldn't say I was like per se like really emotional reading it, but I was very connected to the characters. I was looking for something to happen near the end to make me feel okay again. Okay, so as I get my life 
back together again right before we jump onto the stream. I really, really, really liked it. I really did. Um, I don't know if this is my final rating. I really enjoyed it. Um, I was looking for something slightly different to happen by the end, but also I feel like it's very realistic how things wrapped up, so I can't really blame it for that or anything like that, but yeah, that's generally how I'm feeling. Um, I still have a little bit left of Horror Store, so I'm going to be finishing this on sprints, and then I will be starting American Gods, which is Christine's book. Um, so yeah, actually I have no idea if I actually said this earlier in the vlog, but this Horror Store is from Mo. This, A Very Large Expanse of the Sea, is from Noelle, and this, American Gods, multi-market, mass market, what am I saying, mass market paperback edition, um, American Gods, is from Christine. So, these are the ones that I'm reading for the readathon, of course, uh, and we're gonna see how I like all of them. Sit right there, tell you how they all ended up in some deep shit. From Earth, from Earth, they were born and raised on a spacecraft is where they spent most of their days, chilling out, max air, relaxing all cool with some alien organisms rolled up to their hood. That's all I got. Sweet. Beautiful. This is a story all about how a rock slide twisted life go around, and I'd like to take a minute just sit right here, but I'm scared that I'll get crushed, so I'll move over there. In this place <laughs> called the Stillness, ironically named because the ground shakes, putting all the theme parks to shame. Chilling out, Max, and relaxing all cool till an earthquake comes, then you look like a fool. <laughs> That's all I got. Sweet. Yeah, oh, fifth season. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> a warning, this is bad because I don't rhyme very well. And I took creative liberty with the melody. <laughs> <laughs> And it's not the same song, and all the words are different. <laughs> so, this is a story all about how in the sci-fi world, tech isn't allowed. There's a mechanic, she's sapphic, there's also an arrow ace prince, and I'm there. This mechanic builds tech <laughs> into the heart of people who come to her with battle scars. There's a female super spy out to get her, girl boss, because technology is illegal. And he's something more. Guess I'll have to find out when I read more. <laughs> Yay! Yay. So okay, so reading head. Ready? Ready. <laughs> this is a story all about how Jam's life got turned all upside down, and I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there, and I'll tell you how she ended up a monster slayer. In the city of Lucille, there are no monsters. Everyone's nice, and it's all oh, crap. Chilling out, and relaxing out, cool, and the monsters are locked up, can't break the rules. When a creature came out of a painting of moths, told Jam there was mo trouble in the neighborhood. It said, here, I'm here to haunt monsters, but Jam's not scared. She said, time to kick ass. Yo-ho to Bel Air. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a story all about how a teacher's life got flipped, turned upside down. And I'd like to take a minute to just sit right there to tell you how someone was murdered in this book right here. The students live in rage on this campus is where they spend all of their days. The top 10 always the ones to look out for. Miss Wit is a new teacher trying to settle the score. Then, then there's Ford, the creepy writer, too. Claude, the librarian. And let's not forget Coach Keith, because he's up to something swear at it. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully I'll finish it before the end of the readathon. Now, this is a story all about how this store got flipped, turned upside down, and I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there, and I'll tell you I've been reading this book for a week at Read or Dare. Do, 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 do. Okay. <laughs> In the back of Re Ikea, where they walk the floor, they notice weird stuff about this horror store. Leaking out gross slime, not so cool. Employees talk on a dritzek, it's kind of a stool. When a couple of ghosts who were up to no good started making trouble overnight and should the employee of the month step up, he's not scared, said, let's work the late shift, so I read for Reader Dare. They walked and gawked there hour after hour and things got grosser, they needed a long shower. Someone snuck in and they did a seance. This guy's named Basil, like Herb de Provence. Third chapter, yo, this is bad. Thinking Ouija board messing around like an ass. Is this what people out of horror store living like? Hmm, I'd run out of sight. But wait, I hear a voice like a demon and all that. Is this a haunted prison under a swamp under this floor mat? I don't think so. I'll see when they open this door. I hope they're prepared for this horror store. Yes! Yes! Oh, Wait. oh my god! We have to vlog this. Oh god, it's over. This was a mess. This book tries to be inspirational and poetic and wonderful, and it's just not. 
Smith's work to include not paying rent, eating delicious Parisian food every day, and reading books all day. What a struggle. Mine's really short, so I'll go. So this is Rachel's review of Dash and Lily's Book of Dares, posted December 8th, 2020. <laughs> Not me making this my most highly anticipated book of the month when it was just trash. <laughs> Please just watch the show. You might think, oh, but the book has its merits. I want to do an analysis to compare the differences in the author's intentions to screen comparison. No. If you read the book first, you will hate everyone. The show is far superior. The Jonas Brothers aren't even in this book. What's the point? Oh, wow. The Jonas Brothers aren't even in it. <laughs> I can go. Go. Um, this is a dramatic reading of Rachel's one star review of an absolutely remarkable thing, which, <laughs> for context, is one of my favorite books. <laughs> cool premise, but generally unlikable protagonist who over explains her actions cartoonishly, despite no knowledge of the interwebs. She quickly becomes fluent in social media as she grows into a sensation and sends snarky replies, but communities call her out for being reckless and unsympathetic. So little is explained by the end of the book that it frustrated me enough to abandon what wonder remained after pages of writing in circles. I love the concept of uniting to puzzle out a solution to a massive phenomenon experienced by nearly every human, but what could have been a very logically, morally, scientifically fantastic revelation is overshadowed by sloppy introductions of hexadecimal smooth proof of intelligence and my <laughs> I wish Hank Green would have trusted his audience more and provided clues we could solve alongside April rather than hear her demonstrate her complete lack of understanding of basic concepts so they could be explained to us twice. Bleh. Her even more frustrating <laughs> chosen one for no reason, Mary Soonis, dampens the fun of this book because it is truly never explained, even when it seems the reason is about to be revealed. It's hard to justify this journey when there are no satisfying answers for why we took it. Worse is the bizarre ending that tries to create menacing suspense but falls flat on its face because there's no logical buildup behind it. Read the famous files instead. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Preach. Thank Same you. idea of better robots, better puzzles, and much better write, writing. Not to mention fleshed out characters and real philosophical reflection. <laughs> a woman in cabin 10. Oh, by good. Brown. When you write a murder mystery, you should have a cool story you want to tell. An inventive way someone committed a crime. An unexpected, um, clever trick that fooled everyone at first. Um, at first glance. That the person playing detective puzzled out. I should come away with a, a sense of satisfaction, of understanding the <laughs> motive, the culprit, the method, and the weapon. I should have ample clues to figure it all out, even if I don't before everything falls deep into place. This book didn't bother with these things at all. <laughs> More than half of the book was bit gaslighting the main character into believing no crime has occurred at all. <laughs> and that's his only on edge because he's recently experienced a crime and hasn't died. Unless everyone in this book have affordable health care, <laughs> I argue you all witnessed a crime. <laughs> Please. Please, please, oh, don't waste your time. This is so bad. <laughs> You've got two main characters. One is Sophie, a meek girl desperately and stupidly in love with her best friend, Bianca, who, one, sucks. <laughs> oh, my disrespects her by exposing her traumatic experience as a fun little story. Works with her best friend and then drapes herself over an influential rich boy for secret plans she can't tell anyone about. Says, I don't need you. And then upon being left alone at all screams, how could you leave me in my hour of need? <laughs> Constantly spits in the face of everything her friend aspires to be. Doesn't feel like she sh should have to do anything for anyone for them to want to be her literal slave. <laughs> oh my god. Is a closed minded, racist, privileged, petty bigot with no redeeming qualities and a role in a plot that makes no sense. Can you tell who my least favorite character is? I'm actually convinced that Rachel wrote those reviews so we could dramatically beat them. Okay, uh, you're welcome. Literally, the drama in these. You're welcome. <laughs> This is what I did before I had booktube, is I would just write these very impassioned things. Like, like he was so mad. So mad. I knew it would all pay off someday. Yeah, my my book. I haven't read this book yet, but uh, it's highly anticipated by me, so I'm excited for this review. All right, here we go. <clears throat> 1.5 stars. I fell asleep while reading the first half of this book, and were it not for the Winer's Book Club discussion, I'd have let it be. But no, I'm a good whiner. So I went back so I could understand and participate in the discussion. Thank goodness I did. So I could properly rip this book to shreds. <laughs> <laughs> this is like Percy Jackson if it wasn't fun or interesting. The premise alone seems intriguing, but the execution is horrible. The characters' motivations are all over the place and everyone speaks like they're a Disney character. <laughs> on the Disney Channel TV series trying to get laughs every 10 seconds while maintaining this dark, brooding, God, you are never understanding me persona. I hated pretty much everyone in the end of this book. <laughs> Oh, 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 at least do lores. Just do lores. Okay, we'll do lores. Where is lore? Where is lore? 
Oh, Lord. Okay. Lord. Selfish asshole who buys into white feminism that revolves around all men being trash, who doesn't really want to be a god, but will fight and slash at everyone with no real risk of getting hurt because she's so good at fighting and also breaking into places and performing heists. Literal emoji. Is from New York and will never let you forget it. Constantly tells everyone she's from New York, even though they are also all from New York. Question mark, question mark. Savior complex, but only towards New York. <laughs> Bagels. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, you guys. I'm so proud. Uh, wonderful. So you guys Thank you for that quality uh, content. You're so you know, welcome. to some more sprinting and i am making some progress on american gods so i like it so far but i'm really really early in it all right i read it and i was like that's fine and i realized it was like the appendix so let me actually oh. the real last page Okay. Okay. Oh, no. Oh. No. Oh. Okay. Well, I read it. It's fine, I guess. I have no uh, memory retention, so this means absolutely nothing to me. I could have read, like, this person dies, and we've been like, don't know. That's the. I only memorize things that I absolutely need to know, such as that. And oh, most madly, I know my library card number and very little else. That's about it. Hi. Um, Reader Dare is officially over. It was a success. It was wonderful. It was so much fun. I'm so happy we did it, and it's over now. Sad that it's over, but really, really, really happy how it turned out, and that it was so wonderful. So thank you so much to every single person who came and who made this readathon what it was. Obviously, the biggest thank you to my co-hosts, Noelle, Mo, Christine. You are all incredible. I love you so much. I'm so happy that we did this. And, you know, of course, thank you for the books, but thank you even more for the, the best time. It was just the best time. Um, if you missed it, don't worry, because it's still on YouTube, and you can go check out the first one on Noelle's channel, then you can check out the second one on my channel, and the last one, the big finale, on the Roomies channel that we just wrapped up right now. You can skim through the reading sprints if you wish, if you don't want to get any reading done, and you just want to check out what dares we did, but we had such a blast, and I guess I'll go over what I managed to read during the readathon, and um, then I'll say goodbye. So first, I started reading Horror Store, um, and I really liked it. I gave it basically four stars because it was a physical copy. I think if I listened to it, it might be closer to a three or 3.5, but I really thought that the formatting totally elevated the experience. Uh, the way that it's written makes it very fun to read. And I think it also adds a little extra something because these little um, like excerpts at the beginning that make it look like a little piece of furniture actually add a lot to the story and they get increasingly more sinister as this haunted uh, Ikea-esque store really reveals itself to our main characters. So I really enjoyed this. I'm really happy I got to read it physically, which I really rarely do. So thank you so much, Mo, for sending this to me. I am giving it four stars. Then I read a very large expanse of the sea. So I actually still technically have like the bonus chapters left that are included in this book. So I will read that before I post this video, but um, I am giving this 4.5 stars. I really, really enjoyed it. On Goodreads, I rounded it up to a five and I really liked it. This is um, very much something that resonates with me in terms of a main character feeling that people who treat you differently, who are not as nice to you, um, it's very easy to just categorize all those people and just say like, okay, I'm just never going to talk to these people again. They're all trash. They're all garbage and I don't care about them. And why should I? Because everybody's an asshole. But as she realizes, not everybody is an asshole. And there are plenty of people who maybe are a little bit ignorant, but are actually willing to learn and are still very kind-hearted people. Her main character, he or she, is, uh, also able to kind of have a very beautiful, bittersweet love story with Ocean. And I love them so much. It was so, so sweet. And I'm so happy that I got to read this. Thank you so much, Noelle. For it was 4.5 stars. And I'm really, really happy that I read it. And I'm really glad that I have it. And last day I have American Gods, so I basically only have just started this. <laughs> I think I'm technically still like on the first chapter right now. 
I thought I was a little bit more in, but yeah, I think I'm still in the first chapter. But thank you so much for sending this to me, Christine. I'm definitely going to continue reading it. I also grabbed the audiobook so that way I could still make some progress, even if I'm not physically looking at it. But I will definitely be utilizing this beautiful mass market paperback because I love mass market paperbacks and uh, I'm really intrigued by the story and by the number of people that have recommended this book. So thanks so much for sending it to me. I'm definitely going to keep reading it, even though Your Dare Extraordinaire is now technically officially over. So this is my little stack. Uh, thanks so much to all the hosts once again for sending me these books. They are so lovely. And most of all, thank you to everybody who was on the live and who was in the chat who made this what it was. It literally would not be possible without you, um, everybody who came and did the challenges. You were all such good sports. This would not have worked if you guys would not have been willing to be a little bit goofy with us. So thank you for that. And thank you to everybody in the chat who gave so many awesome suggestions and made all the funniest jokes. Uh, and it helped us come up with more dares. If you're watching this right now and you have some suggestions for future dares, let us know because we're kind of already talking about doing this again. I think that it was such a success and that people really had a great time that I think we just have to do it again. So if you have any suggestions for future dares, leave, leave them in the comment section down below so that way we can check them out. Maybe add them to our new challenge wheel when the time comes for round two. Also highly recommend checking out Noelle and the Roomies vlogs for this weekend because we all vlogged Reader Dare. So definitely go check them out. I'm sure that you will have some more up close and personal footage of them completing their challenges. So go check it out. Thanks so much for watching and thanks so much for hanging out with us. I'm Rachel. This is Let Me in the Library and I'll see you next time. Bye.